So in today's video, I want to talk about the Cookie Super Global Array in PHP and how you can work with cookies in PHP. So cookies, if you don't know, are little pieces of information that you can save in the browser. So everybody's browser is capable of saving these little tiny bits of information. There's name value pairs and a few other pieces of information that are optional. You can say which domain the cookie is tied to. Now the default is whatever domain you're on, but we can specify that we want to use other domains, um, subdomains within our, our domain. So if we're on ibm.com, we could say sales.ibm.com, and that would be a valid value to put for the domain of a cookie. You can specify if the cookie is allowed to be over HTTPS, or rather only over HTTPS. Um, with the changes coming up this year where Google and the other search engines are going to slowly stop accepting websites as um, valid if they don't have HTTPS, they're going to lower their rankings, they're going to start saying, you know what, if you're not going to use HTTPS as a minimum level of security, then we're not going to bother putting your website up there in the search rankings. So with that in mind, let's talk about cookies and how we can man uh, manage them in PHP. So we have a cookie, dollar sign underscore cookie. This is one of the super global arrays. If you want to access a cookie, then it's the name that you've created for this cookie. If I was to create, let's say, a cookie for my session called PHP sesh ID, that should be in the system because we've done that. Uh, we've created a session in this browser before and there we are this is the value of it so cookie PHP session ID that's the name of the cookie and this is the value of the cookie that we're displaying so at its very 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 minimum level we've got a string like this PHP sesh ID equals and then this. So if this were a string, put quotes around that, that could be used as a cookie. That's what the cookies look like. And in the browser, if you take a look, if we inspect the page and we go over to the application section, you'll find here's the cookies and here's HTTP localhost. And inside of here, there's a cookie PHP session ID and there's the value. So this value matches this. That's the cookie. Now the other values that are inside of here are the ones that I was talking about before. So domain, localhost, path, that's the next one. So it says anywhere from the root down. So right after localhost you'll see that first slash. Anywhere from that point down this cookie is going to be valid. It can be read, it can be used. There's going to be an expiry date. Um, if you don't set an expiry date, it's in the past. It immediately expires. Uh, and then the browser will tell us what size it is. So let's take a look in PHP here. If I want to set a cookie, so this is how you'd read a cookie, just dollar sign cookie, just like any of the super global arrays, you put the name inside there. Now, if you want to set a cookie, PHP has this function called set cookie. I was going to call that set cookie and then there's a series of parameters that you pass in the first one is name so PHP sesh ID that would be the name um, I could set any name I want so food is going to be the name pizza is going to be the value now this is optional from this point down these square brackets that's what they mean these are all optional values I'm gonna put a value inside of here expires well uh, whatever the current timestamp is. So PHP has this time function which will give you the current Unix timestamp that's in seconds. I can then add on to that whatever number of seconds I want. So if I was to add 1400 onto it, 1400 divided by 60, that's 24 minutes. That's how long this cookie is going to be valid for. If my browser closes before 24 minutes, then that cookie is going to be expired. If I try to access the cookie after that time it will be expired I won't be able to use it so let's throw that in there just for the 
just for the heck of it. The path, this was the location. So we've got MAD20, uh, MAD9023, PHP videos cookie, anywhere inside that path, I can say anywhere from the root is fine, or maybe only inside this folder, or maybe only inside this folder. So that is now where this cookie is valid, where the browser will be able to access it. If it's looking on this page or on another page inside the same folder, then that cookie will be accessible. We'll be able to get the value from it. This is within the browser in the JavaScript. Um, domain, we did. Um, Localhost was the default. We can just leave it as its default or we can specify that it's only good for localhost outright. That was the default value that we already had. Uh, now these last two, secure. Uh, by default it's false. We can set this to true, meaning this cookie is only going to be readable on this page, accessible on this page, if the page is accessed over HTTPS. So let's, let's put true inside there. Now the last argument, this one, saying that the cookie is only valid over HTTP, um, no point in doing that because we are making it secure. We're saying that it's going to be HTTPS only, um, so we don't really need to specify that. Um, so we're not going to worry about HTTP only. We, uh, we'll just leave it at the default false. All right, so this is going to set the cookie. Um, the for each loop will read through all the cookies that we have uh, on the page each time we load it. So let's load our page. Oh, I've got uh, syntax error here. Oh, I forgot the semicolon on the line before. Yeah, very common PHP error. There we are. So this has been set. Uh, the PHP session ID is there. Now let's go take a look in our application tab here to double check that yes indeed PHP session is the only one set. Now the reason that this is the only one set is because we said we want HTTPS. We want it to be secure only. So let's come back here and change this page to HTTPS. There. Now we have both the session ID and the food cookie. So both of these have been set now. But if I go back to HTTP, the PHP session, that's the only one that can be accessible. Or the only one that is accessible. All right. Now, um, one thing that you may want to check. Uh, if you wanted to find out whether or not the page was on HTTP or HTTPS, you could uh, start looking at some of the variables that are accessible through the PHP server super global array. Now let's run this. So I'm running over HTTP right now, not HTTPS. So I get my cookie. That's uh, this line right here, line 29. Server protocol, HTTP 1. Now this is the protocol. Even if I'm running over HTTPS, this will still be the protocol. Port number. Well, that's just the port number I've got my server set up to run under. Now, I'm under HTTP, but this is the port number. And then this is our request URI, so this is the page being requested. This may be something that you're going to use to determine whether or not you're going to set the cookie in a certain way. You want to know what page you're on, so you can do that. Um, and then undefined index. So HTTPS is another one of the server variables, but it's not showing up. So this is probably the most direct way to find out whether or not you're operating under HTTPS. Just check to see whether or not this variable is set. If it is, you're under HTTPS. If it's not, if it's undefined, then you're not under HTTPS. If I come back in here and I change this, HTTPS, there we are. Now, 
HTTPS comes back as on. So now I know I've got both cookies showing up in my array and I've got on here. So this may, have be, this may be of value to you to find out whether or not your page is on HTTPS to make a decision about whether or not you want to go HTTPS for setting the cookie. Now there are a whole bunch of other variables here. I'm going to loop through all the server variables. Let's go back to HTTP on that page. So we have all these variables. There's our port number that we are looking at, um, the script that we're currently looking at, PHP self and the script name, those are the same. Um, now if I change this, if I change this page to HTTPS instead of HTTP, we're going to get a bunch more stuff coming back as well. All of these, HTTPS is now part of the list, as well as all these other SSL values. So there's a whole bunch more before you even get to the regular stuff that would be inside of the server array, the super global server array. Okay, so that's how cookies work. Um, they're just this string. And if you want to read the value, you can use the cookie super global array. If you want to set a cookie, there's a set cookie method to do that, where you pass in each of the values individually. It's much easier to manage than working with a big long string like you have to, have to do in uh, JavaScript. One other thing to mention here is that we've got uh, this variable order here, e.g. PCS. Uh, this is inside your php.ini file that I talked about in another video. Environmental global, uh, or sorry, get, post, cookie, and server. If C is omitted from here, then you're not going to be able to access the cookie. All five of these values need to be there for you to be able to get the get, the post, the cookie. If you remove any of those values, then you're removing these super global arrays. They won't be generated for you. Uh, I've got some links here that I put uh, for additional documentation, uh, including one from Mozilla talking about the, the client side, the JavaScript side of cookies, how you can access the values as that big long string. All right, so I hope that helps. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.